I love you. Welcome back to the Couch Potatoes. I am the Green Traveler from Gorsh. I was about to fall off into a sleep there. <laughs> <laughs> you were? Mid-sentence. Yeah, mid-sentence I was about to be like, Ooh. I was about to sneeze mid your sentence, and I tried really hard not to. And yeah, now I, I have it. like that like feeling in your nose when you don't yeah. get to sneeze. It's very, it's very uh, uh, adorable of you. I appreciate it a lot to to take I, on that unsatisfied sneeze feeling. Just just it the was a sacrifice. I, really it. I don't know if it was yeah. adorable. I think it's honorable. If anything, I feel loved. All right, well that's nice. That's, that's when I feel I loved, you feel adorable. Okay. That's the Gorshin way. <laughs> I'm the faceless Leon if I haven't said that. And this is a podcast about movies and TV called Green and Faceless on the Couch. Man, every time I want to say on the couch. Every time. <laughs> uh, but You almost went into Irish brogue there. <laughs> Green and faceless. <laughs> <laughs> Green and faceless. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, somebody watched the Simpsons movie, didn't they? Uh, that's the last place I yep, heard Yeah, that. that's true. I did watch it this morning. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I'm, ready brog. I'm ready for that episode. Uh, yeah. That's a sneak peek for... It's spoilers! Later this week. <clears throat> Woo-hoo. Excuse. <clears throat> it's gonna be exciting. But today, we're jumping back in to the James Bond playlist. James the most Bond. beloved playlist of all. Uh, I actually had a lot of fun with this one. I'm gonna be honest. I like it's kind of funny because I looked up the reviews, and it's really hilarious how bad the the modern day reviews of this movie are. Like people hate this movie now, yeah. and yeah, I have like the exact opposite feeling. <laughs> and guess who's back? Back Guy again. Hamilton. Uh, I don't know. The director actually. is he back? Okay, it felt like the other. Yeah, movies, he directed so. Goldfinger. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it felt more like the other movies, so that makes a lot of sense. But uh, yeah. Sean Connery, he is back Woo-hoo! being Bond, and it does feel like those other movies. As I said, I'm just yeah. reiterating myself. But and they don't they don't even acknowledge the weird George Lazenby event. I mean, like no, the stuff that happened definitely at first. It really did seem like they were playing it as a direct sequel. And, and that he was I mean, going after revenge yeah. for, but, but spoilers, guys, they, I don't think they ever mention her. They never mention they Tracy. Don't. No. Ever. But you know, but you know why he's mad is the only thing. That's it. You, you just know, know from why the events he's of the last mad movie. if you watched the Lazenby movie. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, even if you don't, even if you hadn't watched the Lazenby movie, you know, Sean Connery had gone up against Blofeld, so he this does have true. like a, a revenge, a grunge, a grudge against him. Also, but, uh, if they're going to play it as if they're scrubbing out the Lazenby movie, then you are still at where at the end of the previous movie that Blofeld got away. Is it yeah, Blofeld? That's true. Or Bloomfield. I want Blofeld. It, no, Bloomfield is a town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Blofeld. And yeah, this movie opens up with uh with James Bond Thanosing uh Blofeld. You know how if you you know if you waited a year between Infinity War and Endgame, uh you walk into Endgame and you sit down and you're like, Alright, let's see how let's see what they do to Thanos. This is gonna be exciting. And then they lop his head off in the first five minutes, and you're like, Oh, is that it? That motherfucker, he, he wiped out half the universe. We're just going to lop off his head within the first five minutes. And uh, that uh, I, they took direct inspiration from Diamonds Are Forever. You know, the, the, <laughs> the Russo brothers were like, how do we deal with Thanos? Well, there's this James Bond movie that opens up with James Bond killing Blofeld within the first five minutes. <laughs> was it within five minutes? <laughs> and they minutes? went that way. It was pretty fucking quick. He, they have a few moments where... Uh, uh, James is going around and he's like asking people, he's like, where's Blofeld? 
you know, and they're just like, oh, okay, I'll tell you, you know, fucking Jesus, this person that told me something, and he goes and finds that person, he's like, where's Blofeld? And they're just like, oh, Jesus. And he finally hunts him down are you talking to an about- area. Okay. Uh, are you, is this the, but it was the wrong pussy scene? Uh, that's later on. At the very okay, beginning, he later. opens it up okay. with chasing down a Blofeld. Yeah, I in the see. very, very beginning, he opens up, he chases down <clears throat> Blofeld, he finds him in this little cave where they're going under some kind of surgery stuff, surgery procedures, and uh, there's this, there's supposed to be Blofeld who is under, like, a vat of, like, some kind of weird liquid stuff, I don't remember what it was, but, like, he's supposed to stay under there, he had, like, a clay mold over his face, it was, it was to help Blofeld change his appearance, because they were acknowledging that Blofeld has changed his appearance. Because now he looks like uh, Charles Gray, who, uh, as you pointed out to me, was the criminologist in Rocky Horror Picture Show, <laughs> the narrator guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I recognized him I, right away. Uh, but yeah. this isn't also the first time that he was in a Bond film star- uh, <laughs> alongside James Connery. I almost said starring, but he seemed like he was going to star in You Only Live Twice. But then he died within the first five minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Just like he did in this one. (laughs) Because James goes down there, he thwarts the uh the surgery the the transfer of face whatever you want to call it. I don't they don't explain it well. It's just like it's a it's a scientific surgical procedure. But he has to wear a clay mold and go underwater. It's it's dumb. It's a it's a plastic surgery procedure. And and James goes in there, he thwarts it, but then after he thwarts it, he realizes the guy that was in the tank wasn't Blofeld, because, like, Blofeld comes up behind him or something, I can't remember it, but, like, it, they have a little face-off where, you know, he talks to Blofeld, and it, it definitely sounds like Blofeld, it definitely looks like Blofeld, and then Bond, you know, does his thing, he, he knocks off a couple of the guards, and then he kills Blofeld, and he's like, ha ha, job well done. But, you you know, know, what is so ridiculous about that is that they could have used that in the plot for why Blofeld looks different, and they didn't. <laughs> no, exactly, they didn't. yeah. He just, he wears the same uh, uniform as the first Blofeld, uh, Donald Pleasant, and um, yeah. and you know I don't know if it's fair to call him the first because there was Blowfield behind the glass, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't Pleasant that played him. That's true. That's <clears> true. <throat> I do I do like though that the Blowfields we've seen on screen I never knew were people that I just you know I knew yeah you know, right. like Donald Pleasant, Telly Savalas, now Charles Gray. I'm just like. Well, I wonder who else is like who else is gonna be yeah. Blofeld? Because obviously they're not done with this guy. <laughs> no, I mean Christoph no. Waltz, we know that one right, already. Right, yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, from there, I don't really remember the plot of this film because okay. it's very sci fi and very silly. But I enjoy it a lot because he comes across uh he comes across Jill St. John early on. I will say that, because mm-hmm. I do remember that. Um, she is, uh, what the hell is she even doing? She's, she's at first, she's very know. badass because she's got like, she's got bond, yeah, like wrapped around her finger, but not in that way. You know, they're not, they're not sleeping together at, at first. Right. It seems like, like it's going to go that way. And then you find out that she's some kind of master thief. And also yeah. she <laughs> takes him to Blowfield. I think. That's true. I, think. I do remember that. I think. Yeah. And I think that leads to the, uh, but that was the wrong pussy line or whatever that fucking line is. I know I'm missing. Yeah, it. Eventually he does come across and like <clears throat> discovers that at the beginning, the person he thought was Blowfield, whom he had killed, was, spoilers, not Blowfield. Right. It was just another guy made to look like Blowfield. And yet the real Blowfield's still <laughs> out there. Yeah. And he's, he's behind some dastardly plot. Um, I remember it involves a space laser because uh, there were there were many yeah. moments in this where I, I realized the direct links of Austin Powers and James Bond. Like, <laughs> obviously, I've always known Austin Powers was based off James Bond. You know, I knew that right. I knew it took most inspiration. But watching this movie, I was like, oh, these are the moments. You know, there's certain <laughs> there's certain things in this where I'm just like, oh, 
this is where it got the inspiration because it's so goofy. This movie is so goofy. <laughs> and it has a space laser. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. And is that but why I don't they remember need the anything about it? Yeah, that's why yes, they need the diamonds. Is. Yeah, it <clears throat> empowers the laser. Yeah. So but the, thing, uh, but the problem is I don't remember anything else about this movie. <laughs> there's a couple things that I remember because, honestly, I, I pay attention to the second half more than the first half. I'll be honest. I was doing some cleanup on the the um, <clears throat> on the on podcast stuff. I was, I was adding some links and stuff like that. But anyhow. Gotcha. Uh, two things that I remember, and it'll probably end up being four things. Uh, Dr. Metz played by Joseph first uh, is a scientist who is just, he just loves peace because nobody else does. And, and I don't know if you can catch the sarcasm on the other end there, but <clears throat> yeah, they, they, they are like almost making fun of this guy. Uh, uh, these other people. And uh, anyhow, Blowfield somehow convinced him that making this laser and holding the Earth hostage was how they were going to uh, actually make peace happen worldwide. And Such a charismatic fellow that Blowfield. Yeah, uh, well, honestly, <laughs> Charles Gray is kind of he's pretty charismatic. Like the, he, he the, is. Well, he wants to be. I would not say that Donald Pleasant's version is charismatic. Not at all. No. But, you know, Wallace was scar, just like intimidating. Like I felt like the scar would be a, like a, a a returning factor, and I feel like maybe. The second guy. What was his name again? Uh, Telly Savalas. Telly Savala. Uh, I feel like he might have had a scar in that eye, but it was, like, not, like, you know. I think, yeah. I think he had, like, a mild, it like, was very kind subtle. of, like, thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I do not think that Charles Gray had anything on his face. I don't remember anything. If he yeah. did, it was, so like, he... on the very side <laughs> of his cheekbone. <laughs> Maybe he did. Maybe he did have something over there. If if he did, I ignored it. All yeah, he just he has these like very good cheekbones that <laughs> that is just like a head. If it had if he had a yeah, if he had a scar, it was somewhere lost in there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like he did have like longer hair. The, the other two are bald and he has like this long longish hair <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's a good i will i will say he does make a very good like do sinister like him. villain yeah, yeah but this he's got a bit of charm is so different than the last movie <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, they went for so many the like there's so, so many different. more jokes yeah they went so hard on the jokes and i, I really kind of <laughs> loved it for that like um <laughs> I don't remember this character at all. We were talking about her before the podcast, but there's a lady that approaches him at the uh, the casino. She's very ditzy. I thought she was she might be a spy, honestly. Um, but like her name is Plenty. You know, he's like, "What's your name?" And she's like, "Plenty, Plenty O'Toole." <laughs> and he and you know, I think I'm pretty sure Vaughn responds like, I, "I bet you are," or like, "You sure are," or something like you know, yeah, something very. I bet you are. <laughs> Like, who are these people with these strange names? Like, was there, like, a trend in, like, the 30s to name your children these weird names? Like, <laughs> because... I mean, I really... I kind of, like, want to change galore. my last name just so I could do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, do you? <laughs> just like I have a child, just be like, this is your new name. <laughs> Daddy, where did our Butts. name come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, son, I changed my last name to Butts because it was funny. And then I had a kid. <laughs> and I mean, thought, do you know what else would be funny? Seymour. Seymour Butts. You mean you did this on purpose? Yes, kid. <laughs> to me? Daddy! And then he kicks you in the nuts and he runs away. He'll have a better life. There is a person that we need to talk about, uh, played by There's Jimmy two Dean. I want to talk about. 
Uh, Jimmy Dean is in this movie. Uh, I don't, I really only know him by name, to be perfectly honest. I know he's an American country singer because I just looked at it. And he also don't has Don't forget a sausage his sausages. Brand. I do like the sausages. I'll say that. I don't. Well, you're I'm vegetarian. vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. I used to love them. I'll be honest, Jimmy. Yeah. I know yeah. You, you're dead and can't hear this, but I used to love them. And now I don't. And that's so, life. He's playing Willard White, who is the kind of the the dupe the, of of the uh, the whole operation here. Uh, Blowfield has somebody impersonating uh, a White. I don't know if it's Blowfield or not. I can't remember. And that's how they get all the diamonds, and that's how they get right. the rocket and uh, to send the satellite. <clears throat> Uh, it's all coming back to me. When, when Bond goes and rescues Willard White, he gets first attacked by his two bodyguards. Oh, He's... God, yeah. Those are the ones I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Went and Mr. Kid? Are they, is that the oh, two bodyguards? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, those oh, are Blowfield's henchmen. Those are Blowfield's. Uh, okay. Yeah, but there are these two sexy women who just attack Bond, and uh, I'm pretty sure he drowns one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, God, that's right. Uh, Jesus, yeah. Yeah, and they were just trying to protect uh, Willard White. Man, where are they on the... On yeah, because I remember someone like walks in and he's just like holding one of them under, under the water. He's just like, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Lola Larson and Trina Parks portray Bambi and Thumper, That's it. White's bodyguards. That's it. Bambi and Thumper. I knew it was something like that. But yeah, like I was like, when I saw that, I was like, they went Disney? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> they got sued. Excuse me. If they had done that today, they would have been sued. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Statue of limitations on that has played out. I'm pretty sure. Maybe not. I don't know. Cinema. Uh, so here we go. There, you yeah, know, I'll, we also got your regulars back. As uh, we got Bernard Lee as M, Desmond Llewellyn as Q, and uh, uh, Lou. Louise Maxwell as Miss Money Penny. Indeed, they don't. Oh. Money Penny has a little more in this movie than the other two do, thankfully. But yeah, they, again, they, they're kind of just like there to right. to keep the franchise alive, you know. <laughs> yeah, these are the continuing factors. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, we do have the return of character Felix uh, Lighter who I believe was in the last film as well with Lazenby. But it, it, I, and I think that Norman Burton played him in that movie too, but I don't know for sure. Sue me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> um, look, I'm trying to find it on the Wikipedia. It looks like it was not Norman Burton. Uh, he well, was in Thunderball fuck. last as Rick Van, played by Rick Van Nutter. <laughs> okay. And I remember okay. making fun of him back then, and I'm sorry, sir. I'm a child. <laughs> Rick Van so, Nutter. The, t- the I don't two know characters what I to wanted say. to talk about, though, oh, were uh, Mr. Yeah, Went and right. Mr. Kid, Bruce Glo- played by Bruce Glover and Putter Smith, respectively. Right. Um, they are the goofiest they sure characters are. I've ever seen in Bond. <laughs> Yeah, and apparently they're sure. rated on like the the worst villains list too. So it's just like <laughs> of all of the of all of the Bond villains, apparently they are at the very bottom, and I think that's hilarious. Yeah, they're just they are ridiculous. I don't even remember like some of the stuff they do. I just uh, I know that Bond just comes across them like many times throughout this movie, and they are just they're they're goofy. They're like. Uh, Man, how do you even describe them? Well, one I know there's a one of them's a little chubbier set and has like a great mustache. Yeah, I'm pretty sure and that's like, Mr. Kid. I think but you're right. I could be wrong. And then the other one is just like a very weird like he kind of reminds me of Willem Dafoe, the other one does. It, it like he has a weird really weird haircut. Like I don't know. I don't know how to describe <laughs> them. <laughs> They're just goofy. I, uh, They're goofy yeah. as fuck. So, yeah, he so I'm pretty sure it's Mr. Kid. Ha- is he has uh, 
quite he's lost most of his hair on top he's got sideburns and the mustache he wears glasses um uh mr went is clean shaven uh he is a little bit shorter than mr kid i'm not sure how tall they are in uh, relation to other people's and uh mr went just has a great smile <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure he does. <laughs> he he really has a smile that reminds me of of Willem Dafoe. Like yeah, I, just I saw that guy, and I was just like, yeah. oh my god, oh my god. But they they take a very like weird pleasure in in what they're doing, and they have some like very elaborate kills. Like um, looking on their Wikipedia, I remember that they they killed somebody with a scorpion. They put a scorpion down somebody's shirt, which was like, oh okay, sure you could just shot him, but okay. You know, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> I guess they're trying to cover it up maybe, you know, but uh, another one is they, they killed Plenty O'Toole. I forgot about that, but they drowned Plenty O'Toole. Yeah, they, they drop her into a swimming pool. That's right. That's right. They also, they also uh, come and serve, I believe, uh, Tiffany Chase who's uh, Jill St. John and James Bond in their room. And he's like, oh, but we did a daughter yeah. room service. And um, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're like, oh, it's on the compliment of the captain or something like that. I think they're on a cruise ship, maybe. I don't remember. Yeah, something. Somewhere. But- <laughs> they're enjoying themselves because they, they, they succeeded the succeeded the mission, you know. Yeah, that's the that's the end of the movie. Like last second, like whoa, got them. <laughs> we can keep the audience in their seat to the very end. Was Honestly, that the last I like thing? even though I whatever. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was the very end. Still good. Still a very yeah. fun scene. It, it has. Uh, it, it reminds me of the uh, the oddball moment. You know, where he like shows up at the end to attack Bond one last time before right, the movie right. ends. Yeah, odd job. You mean odd job? Thank you, oddball. I think that's the the Lost of Powers version, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, honestly, to go into my closing statement with this one, I, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. I was smiling and laughing the whole time because it was dumb as fuck, and I, I dug it. You know, I was just like, hell yeah, this is everything. You know, this is, this is so Austin Powers-like that I'm having the most fun, <laughs> and yet I don't remember a goddamn thing about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> So I, I can't give it more than two and a half stars. So I I do I do feel you on that that it is kind of hard to remember, but I did think I enjoyed the ride. Like I said, I was doing bookkeeping on, on my computer at the same time. But <laughs> I did that after Sarah went to bed, I all of a sudden realized that an hour and like twenty minutes had gone by. And I'm like, oh shit, it's really late. I didn't mean to watch most of all this movie. I need to save the rest for later. So the fact that it kept me entertained enough for that hour and a half, I I think that's a good sign. So I I, I give it a face. It's a full face movie. I think I might recommend it more than the last one. like I said, I didn't watch it. As super yeah, close. I definitely. I, it's weird because it's like I like Blaze and B. I think he was fine. I like that. That I think mm-hmm. that last movie was fine, but there was just something so just stupid about this one that was great. Like Sean Connery coming back. I like. I feel like he was just like, I'm just gonna do one more and done. Like I don't know the whole situation behind it. I didn't look it right, up again. Sure. But like he, he he after this it's it's Roger Moore. So like there was something that happened that you know Sean Connery was like, this is it, and he just seemed like he was having fun. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like that. You know, he was just he was just out there yeah. throwing punches and grinning like an idiot, and like it was it was fun. Maybe it was something like uh, he was. It seemed like he was happy that people were like, "No, it's got to be James. You got to bring James back." And he's like, yeah. "Okay, I'll do it again, but just one more time." And, yeah. and you, know, <laughs> you got to get out of these things before they start to feel like. Yep. You know, a, You're an actor. before they you don't start want to feeling do like character. work, honestly, yeah. I mean, you know, it is, uh, it is work always, but it is 
ma- playing make believe for a lot of yeah. money. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like, uh, you know, if it stops being fun, what's the point? Exactly. And he had his encore. He enjoyed his encore. And now we'll get to see what Roger Moore does. And I'm, I'm excited yeah. for that because I, I don't think I've seen any of the Roger Moore films. Right. <clears throat> I haven't. I, I'm sure of it. What I did see, to segue one last second before we uh, before we wrap up here, I did see a new movie in the theaters. And if you want to hear about that, you can head down to patreon.com slash green and faceless and uh, check out our subscription tiers. We'll have a uh, an exclusive episode for the $10 tier and above. So uh, check Bangers it out. Bangers and Hash. Get... Bangers and Hash. That's right. We got a name for it. Bangers and hash. <laughs> Bangers and hash. Did you come up with a, th- a theme song for it? No, I didn't. Yet. That's no. okay. I didn't listen to the first episode because I don't know if I'm a ten dollars. I just put it up <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll send it to you. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way to make you an administrator. We could probably cut this part out. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I think uh, that's our show. I hope, yeah, it is. It is. And uh, I hope to see you. Or, I mean, I won't see you, but I hope you'll hear us next time we're out here next Thursday. And you'll join that's us right. again uh, next Monday for the for continuation of the James Wan playlist. More oh, yeah, bondage. baby. More <laughs> bondage. Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> Unless it's Bond being tied up. He did you know, get, he did he get usually uh, does tied up sometimes get, in this film. get restrained, yeah. and he might have at one point in this movie. He gets I'm pretty he get sure paralyzed. He I think he gets paralyzed. I know I know that Wint and Kid do uh, knock him out, so they might, have, uh, they might have paralyzed him at one point. Who knows? Yes, that's right. That, that's, that's... Okay. Well... <clears throat> <laughs> That's the show. Indeed, I'm the Green Traveler from Gorsh. And I am the Faceless Leon. Safe travels and good night. Green and Faceless on the Couch is a proud production of Fiction Works 19. Are you a fan of the show? Feel free to contact us at greenandfacelessfans at gmail.com or visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash greenandfaceless. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Or rate us on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for listening.